Hey everyone, welcome back to another Painting with Jay. As always, my name is Jay. So grab a brush, grab some paints, grab some models, and paint along with me. Let's read our world of unpainted models. Yes. Shout out to Cody Roo. And Mr. Spot. So, today I'm going to keep working on my trucks from last week. I was trying to get them done before today, and I don't have the time. I haven't had the time to get them completely done, so I figured I might as well finish them as much as I can in this week's video. And then do all my airbrush stuff on them afterwards. I use some lighting effects on one of the trucks, some dirtying up, you know, some weathering. Uh, that's okay. So today I'm going to work on the five trucks as always, and uh, yeah, keep finishing up my orcs. It's been a lot of fun so far. I'm really starting to see the finish line with my orcs. Next week I'll probably either do a battle wagon or some knob bikers, and uh, yeah, we're going to keep going from there. So let's get started on this week's painting with Jay. Hey everyone, so I've been working hard on these models. Last week I was just doing the skin tones, but as you can see now, they're pretty much, you know, they're going to be my, my tabletop quality now. This is the average uh, paint job, as you can see. They're all painted about the same, but there are, uh, my friend Rob built some of these and there are exclusive details each one, i.e. the grot sticking out of the grill on that one. This one has the ram's head from a bike. Um, it's cool stuff. So today I'm going to be working on all, just finishing up all the details on all these parts. I don't think there's any more washes that I need to apply. Um, I'm just going to be simply finishing up the details and then I'm going to finish them up with an airbrush afterwards. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. As I said, it's going to be a pretty easy painting with Jay. So today I'm going to finish up this, this, the tiny details. I'll start with the, the truck brought, given to me by my friend Ian. And I just have to finish up the black teeth on the truck right there. And this truck's pretty good. I'm going to do the windows later too with a red. And I'm going to finish up the baseboards with the, the wood. So this actually is probably where I'm going to give a lot of attention to today. I might just put on the gloves. That way I don't uh, get any fingerprints when I'm painting some of these areas. And we'll go from there. But uh, yeah, it's going to be good. I'm really excited to finish these trucks. These trucks, other than Ian's truck, which I got recently for Christmas, um, or near Christmas time, I don't, uh, I haven't painted these trucks. I've had them for a long time. One of the trucks was even unpainted, uh, sorry, unassembled. Of course, they were all unpainted. Um, and I've been putting them off. They weren't a vehicle that I, I've been using in my battle reports for my orcs, but they are cool. And I just, uh, this is the thing about my painting with Jays, is that my goal is to rid my world of unpainted models. And therefore, um, I've been painting models that I d haven't painted before that I've, I've set aside. And the goal is, of course, to finish up. So right now I'm going to take some gray liner, put my palette here. Um, you know, the goal of my painting with Jays is to finish up all my models, right? And I started off with the ones I really, really wanted to get into my battle reports quickly. And now I'm working on the ones that I that aren't as quick, and that's okay. I'm gonna get all these done for my collection, my orcs, and then I'm gonna film a, a video, of course, showcasing all my orcs. Um, I can never have enough orcs, I'm guessing, but that's okay. But it's gonna be nice, and I, as I said, I, I can really see myself in the home stretch now. Um, my goal is to have all my orcs done before the beginning of the summer, and I'm well on my way of that. I am. Um, I'll probably have them all done by May. Yeah. But, uh, we'll see. We'll see. You know, as I said, I'm going to just keep painting along. I think this year I can finish up Orcs. I can finish up probably Grey Knights. Once I figure out which models to allocate, you know, I have a bunch of Space Marine models that I can allocate either to Grey Knights, to Dark Angels, or to uh, Vanilla Marines, which are, in my case, Imperial Fists. So the silver, the green, or the yellow. There we go. This model's really cool. I know there's a little extra pieces of flash on that. I kept them on because I actually thought it looked cool. I'm going to paint some orky on top. But uh, I want to remove them. Look like it would do some damage to it. So that's all good. 
But uh, yeah, this model's really cool. And I can't wait to have this thing done and on the battlefield too. All right, one color done. Mm, yeah. So might as well take the gray liner while I'm here. Maybe just do a quick dry brush of the uh, exhausts because that was one of the areas that I wanted to just do a quick dry brush to build a little soot on these start talking I keep forgetting that's okay I'm it's been a long week I'm just painting right now I'm working this weekend this video will probably be out sometime this weekend um, there was this tournament I really wanted to go to this weekend that my friend will was hosting but unfortunately I had to work so that's okay I think he understands it's tough I have to book off days one in advance yeah There we go. Good. So, done there. Now I'm going to take some uh, wood colors and dry brush quickly that uh, the wood panels in the back of that truck. Yeah, let's get that done. So, first I'll take some orange fang brown and combine it with a little bit of mm, Scrag Brown. In fact, Scrag Brown might have been a better color anyway. That's okay. I'll start with some Scrag Brown. So what else is new and exciting? Not too much. Not too much is new. I um, Here's a story for you all. So my car has a, a latch in the trunk that uh, is two latches in the trunk to be able to open the trunk. And I broke it recently on a very cold day. I broke my latch trying to open my trunk, snapped it. And uh, I looked online, you know me, I'm a bit of a YouTuber. So I love to look at YouTube. And on YouTube I found a video of a guy who had the exact, exact same problem as me. I was like, oh, good. And he said, you know what, the part here in the United States, that was an old video filmed about three or four years ago. But he said, you know, the video, um, the part is like 50 bucks US. Um, I went and I checked US, and it was going to be about $50 plus shipping, what ended up being about, you know, 80 US, or 75 US. And so I was like, okay, cool. And it takes about, you know, 15 minutes to do. I'm like, okay, I can do that. I'm not terrible. I'm not amazing with my hands for, you know, uh, there we go. So you have some, building up some wood tones in the back. And now I'll just add some, uh, a tiny bit of XV88. But, um, yeah, so let's start. Let's continue talking. So, uh, the video in real time took the guy about 15 minutes to do it. Now I figure he took his time because he was instructing very uh, slowly on how to fix the problem, right? He was instructing on, on how to fix the problem and taking his time for the, the video. So I was figuring, all right, okay, it's gonna take me about mm, 10 to 15 minutes at most, probably 10 minutes to fix the part, the latch, that the way the guy showed me. I took the 
when I when I had to order the part, I went to my local dealership that sells for that company, and I talked to the guy and I said, "Yeah, I need a I need the latch to for my car, All right?" And the guy said, "Okay, sure." You know, he he went through the inventory, ordered me the part, said it was going to take about a business day, and it would end up being about the exact same cost as what I, if I ordered it from the United States because the just the duty potential, and um, and the fact that uh, the exchange rate, right? So I figured, okay, look at that, very wooden planky. Um, and I'm intentionally not going perfectly symmetrical, focusing more heavy in certain areas. There we go, awesome. So then I ordered the part, and while I was ordering the part, the guy said, oh, that doesn't look like it should take you very long. I said, nope, shouldn't take me very long at all. I'm guessing it'll take me about 10 minutes. And I wasn't being rude or anything. I just, you know, it didn't look like it was too hard to replace. And it was just a set of screws and knowing where to unscrew and whatever. So, but then the parts guy said, oh, you no problem. Maybe, you know what? Maybe let me go talk to the people in the back, the, the, the auto body people. And maybe, the, see, sometimes they'll just put it in. So when the part arrives, we can just put it in for you. It's not going to take very long. I, um... A lot, sometimes they'll do it for free. I'm like, oh, that's a nice gesture. You know what? Sure. Like, I'm not, I, if, they, if they want to do it themselves, I don't care. I, I would gladly do it myself and learn how to do it, but I, I watched the video. And I know how to, I, I could pretty much do it watching the video. Uh, so right now I'm just taking some silver and painting these little metallic areas that are on top of the wood. Um... Now that the wood is all done and textured. So, I... The guy disappears, goes to the back, uh, goes to the auto body people, and comes back and he goes, Sorry, I, I'm a little confused, but they, they quoted you an hour and a half's labor to fix the latch. And they said, well, and they asked me, he's like, is the, is the latch broken? I said, yes. They said, so can you open your trunk officially? I said, no. Which, in the video, the guy just shows you how to do it very quickly with a screwdriver. And it took him like 30 seconds. Um, and he said, well, if the latch is broken, can't be opened, it could be up to two hours of labor. Labor costing like $185 Canadian per hour. So two hours of labor. Which really confused me. I I, kind of, I even politely called him out on his his bull and then I said but you and I just discussed it and you saw how to replace it right and this is yes and I said did it look like it required an hour and a half to two hours of labor it looks like it's somebody and according to the video it's a simple tool it's just a, a torque wrench right with the different heads the star the star heads and I said doesn't it didn't it look like when we did the like when you were talking about the part with me didn't it look like it only take about 10, 15 minutes in a single tool? And the guy in the parts department said, yeah, but he's just the parts guy, right? He doesn't do the actual fixing of the vehicle. He's just the parts guy, and it's the it's ultimately the, the mechanics who... Um, and I'm not saying by any means, you know, all mechanics are shifty or anything, but they quoted me at two hours of labor. An hour and a half to two hours of labor, depending on how broken my trunk latch was which really confused me. And I said, very politely, I said, okay, thank you very much for the part. Uh, I'll take the part. I'm not taking the labor. I'm not booking myself in for an appointment. I'm going to go home and I'm going to try this myself because I have, I'm, I didn't want to act arrogant, but I watched a YouTube video. It didn't look too hard. It really does not look hard for my vehicle. It's like nine screws. Remove nine screws. Remove part. Put in new part. Tighten nine screws. Okay, right? Obviously, for most things that are auto body, I can't do myself, right? I'm not saying I'm a mechanic by any means. But what I am saying is certain parts are easier to fix than others. And I kind of felt like the, the, the dealership was ripping me off. And so I took it home. And last night, I got home. And I was like, you know what? Let me try to replace my... Um, let me see if I can replace my... Oh, sorry, I need a, uh, one of my ghost tints for this next step. My red ghost tint. There's blue, 
There's black. Uh, I need my red ghost tint. But uh, I figured, let's see if I can do it myself. That's the or the purple ghost tint. Hmm. It'll look cool. Here's the red ghost tint. So, I came home and I watched the YouTube video again just to make sure that I knew what I was doing and it said, you know, in this order, undo these screws, take out part, put in new screws. Okay. And I'm not terrible with my hands. As I said, I'm not terrible. I'm just not a, I'm not a, an auto body technician. Um, and yeah. And I tightened myself and it took me using his technique took me about 30 seconds, 30 seconds, to open my latch using a simple flathead screwdriver. 30 seconds, right? And so I'm like, okay, there's a half an hour's labor cut off there. And it took me eight minutes and 45 seconds to remove the old part, put in the new part, and finish the job, and my latch was working. So, the whole process, I did it in less than 10 minutes. They quoted me an hour and a half to two hours of labor at a professional dealership with, and I did that with a torque wrench. The torque wrench, I did have to buy I bought that Canadian tire for $6. It was on sale. All right. But uh, come on. And I hate, I hate that. I hate being ripped off like that. And if I was just someone who didn't check out a YouTube video, I might have bought into that. Oh, okay. The latch looks like it's, it's hard to replace. I, you know. That really annoyed me. It really got to me because I know they, like, I don't know, maybe they assume that, again, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know how to fix it, whatever. So right now I'm taking Ghost Tint Red, which is fresh blood, and I'm painting all the goggles on the models. And I want to use it also on the windows. Um, and it really annoyed me. It put me in a sour mood about, you know, I'm glad that I did it myself. And I'm really glad that I can do it myself for future notice in case the other one, latch ever breaks. There's two latches on the, um, there's two latches on the trunk. So if I ever break the other latch, I know what to do, right? It's pretty simple. But it really, it really annoyed me how they tried to take advantage of me in this case because there's no way that that was going to take an hour and a half to two hours to do. Could not. There's no way. Me and a simple wrench, a torque screw set, did the job in less than 10 minutes. And my job is good. Like it is not, it's not going to break. It's just some screws that I unscrewed and screwed back in. So, yeah, that really, really annoyed me. I, and I get it. They, and it started off, well, it, like, when the parts guy said, you know what, it, do, it doesn't look like it's going to take very long. Let me talk to them. Maybe they'll do it for free and quickly. I was like, okay, that is great customer service right there. That's great customer service. And as you can see, the ghost tint, oops, I touched it. Let me put that back in. It's pretty, it settles. So it's pretty easy to touch up if you make a mistake and touch it. And I was thinking, wow, that is a great customer service thing. You know, I, they, hey, it's not going to take too long. Maybe we'll do it for free. And then it turned into, 
an opportunity for them to really shake me down for money. Because remember, service at this particular dealership is almost $200 an hour. They were quoting me three to $400 in service to fix a latch I did myself in 10 minutes. So, and that's the thing, I do some stuff for my car myself. I don't do my own oil changes. My car is really low to the ground and it's, it's not fun for an oil change. But I might start doing an oil change myself. I might get a, a, um, uh, a jack and start doing my oil changes. I'm, I, I'm really, you know, and only do the things that need to be done at the dealership, at the dealership or the, uh, at a auto body place. There we go. That'll take a little while to, to dry. I may do another quick layer after it too, but it does, it will appear like glass. And I'll touch it up. Look at that, that looks really cool. And I like the red because the orc eye is red. The next I'm gonna do is clean up the blues, do an edge highlight around the blues, and then do a little bit of chipping on top of my cleanliness. Um, and then some mud. With that settled in the background. So what else do I need to do? Oh, the horns. I need to do the bone texture, like just to build up a couple layers on the skull. And this person's bone on their sword. Yeah, so that's it. I really don't trust this dealership anymore. I, I'm annoyed and I get it. You know what? I get it. I'm not a mechanic. I am not a mechanic. And certain things, I have to rely on them. But And I get it. It's a business. But there's, that's a huge discrepancy. Like, I get it. A, a dealership will take time to fix stuff. I get it. And they're, you know, they can do things that I can't do. I am not a, an auto body technician. I paint miniatures. I'm working on a truck right now. My truck is an orc truck. But, um, oh my goodness. It just teaches you, you know what? Do a little research. Do a little research. YouTube is a great thing. Do a little research and some things you can do yourself. You know, some things you can do yourself. And that really... So my first question to you guys, let's create a discussion about this. What is the worst, have you ever been taken advantage of, you felt, or tried to be taken advantage of at a dealership or an auto body shop? Because I felt like, oh my goodness, you guys are thinking I'm a sucker. I'm not paying you two hours to do this. And then I thought, you know what? I walked away, not necessarily arrogant, but curious. Maybe I was wrong. I was questioning my research and I shouldn't have. I was questioning my research. Maybe it's not as easy as I thought. Maybe I'm in over my head, but let's try. I said that to try them. And the very last thing the service people said was, well, yeah, go home and try. Feel free. Just give us a call. Remember, we're booking so much out when you need our help. And he didn't say if you need our help. He said when you need our help. I'm like, okay, when I need your help, I will call. And I need their help. And, um, yeah, my girlfriend's thinking I really should, like, rail into them on, on some social media, like you, on Facebook or Yelp or whatever, which I might, to be honest, I don't know. There we go. But uh, it really annoyed me. It really annoyed me that they tried to take advantage of me like that. Because, wow, that is... And I wonder how many times has someone come in for that exact problem? And they could have said the same thing. If you want to do it yourself, like, I'm, I'm not the most... Ha I'm not terrible with my hands, by any means. I can I do my own thing. Like, I can replace light bulbs. And I've done a couple other things with my cars. And, it, it, you know, certain things are easier than others. Certain things, like, I won't try. But, um... Yeah. But that really soured my mood for a couple of minutes. But I was so happy that I did it myself. And I'm, I was really proud of myself that I did it. And that I didn't take their own suggestion at face value. That I did it honestly. That I tried it myself. And that I... Um, and that I did it myself. And I, I feel good. It feels good to do things with my own hands, you know? So that's about it. I want to paint uh, a little bit of the... Let's tidy up this part a little bit. 
And then I'm just going to clean up the blues. Um, then I'm done. I'm going to just airbrush some effects, you know, some lighting, some dirt, some soot. And call it a, a project for these trucks because trucks are a lot of fun to use in the battlefield. They're such detailed models. But they're one of those models, as I described last time, that has such a high time of painting to point cost ratio that it just takes a long time to paint this model that isn't worth a lot of points. It's, it's, that's the thing about painting a horde army is that you have to paint a lot of models. And that's okay. There we go. So that's good. Let's paint the, um, I'm just going to paint a, the string, hit it with a shade, and call it. I'm so close to calling it a project yet for this. As I said, I wanted to finish up before the painting with Jay. But I occasionally, and I, I do agree, I've missed some painting with Jay weeks. And the reason is usually that I do want to do a painting with Jay, but if I don't have an hour to dedicate to the time, I paint by myself. Like if I have a half an hour, I uh, I just paint, right? And sometimes I get caught in these in these intermediate stages where, like, if I let's say I worked on these and finished them in about forty five minutes, which is what it's going to try to take me today, and then I'll do the airbrushing. Um, then I don't have anything to paint because the next group of models isn't assembled or primed or ready yet. And then I don't have anything to do with painting with Jay. So I get caught sometimes in, in these intermediate areas where I'm preparing the next painting with Jay and I've done the next, the previous one, and then I don't have anything to paint. And that's kind of why I get caught sometimes. But really these guys are coming along really well. I love them and they look really nice. So now what I'm gonna do is take some um, of my blue, which is Calidor Sky, thin it down. And that's it. I'm not trying to, to say I distrust all um, hardworking blue collar groups or anything. I just, because obviously I know I can't do everything with my hands. I'm not that talented. It's just I feel really annoyed that they tried to take such heavy advantage. Now I agree. If they said half an hour's labor because they round up or something, it would take about 20 minutes for a guy. Cool. You know, right? That that would make more sense to me. Um, I said I estimated it would take me about fifteen minutes, and I maybe you know their argument is pretty easy. They say maybe you know you over you're overestimating your ability, and that you uh, it'll take us about twenty minutes to half an hour. We round because it, you know we can't just charge in the fifteens. Okay, logical. That's very logical. I'm going to be like, okay, you know what? That makes sense. Maybe I'm not. Maybe I'm just overestimating my abilities. But that overestimate, sort of that overcharging that much, that is not. That's not right. So to be honest, I'm going to go back to that. Now, my parts are hard to come by. So I'm going to only go back to that place for parts if I need to. I'm right now shopping to look around and see if there's any other dealerships in this area that will sell the same parts. Because I've really, I've been going to them for a little while, only when I need to, of course, but um, really disappointing. Um, what else is new? In the Warhammer 40k world, uh, this weekend, some more uh, Gene Seer Cult goes up for sale. I knew it eventually would. The Abominant and the Aberrants would go up for sale because they were all the the uh, box sets were being removed from uh, from sale. So I knew eventually they would just it took them an extra week to come out. But the Abominants and the Aberrants um, are now for sale, which is good. If you had Tooth and Claw, you probably got a better deal. I really do like the new Gene Star Cult Army. Um, I'm kind of curious, as I said, how it affects the meta. It's a, not an easy army to use. And it's going to be um, a lot of strategy to play. You know? uh, this week I put out a couple videos. I think a painting with Jay 
and my, my thoughts on the beta bolts rule. And the discussion's actually been really good. I like these my thought videos. I'm gonna keep putting them, my next one's gonna be pretty simple too. But I like the discussion that's being created out of these rules, out of these uh, videos, sorry. I really like that. It's been a good discussion. And it's like, kinda like in my old Q and J's. So I've been really enjoying that and I wanna keep making them. They're good videos. Um, I still have a battle report being edited right now. It's a Grey Knight battle report. I tried the new Grey Knight rule, the Grey Knight uh, points costs versus Dave. And Dave was preparing for a tournament. I believe it was the tournament that was this weekend. Maybe not. Mm, I don't remember how many points we played, so. It was 2,000 points now. I think it was the, it's this week's tournament that I wanted to go to was 1750. Let me just quickly hit that with a shade. Uh, so I'll take a track note nightshade. My brush is really splitting, as you can see that. The amount of hours I've used this brush for. I'm okay with that, but I'd like to keep it going, so I'm trying to get it nice and clean with some brush cleaner as much as possible. These trucks are done. As I said, maybe I'll do a little bit of light scratching on them. Some wear, some dirt on the wheels, and some you know dirt on the front. Some soot, a little more soot. But I'm I'm really happy with the way that these turned out. I'm trying to. It's taking me a lot of time. I've spent probably about ten hours total painting these things. Now it's five trucks, right? Five trucks. But um, it's been a busy week and a half. And I'm, I'm happy to get these things off my plate and start the next batch. As I said, it's probably going to be knob bikers. I think I'm going to do knob bikers next. The more I think about it, I should paint what's assembled. Um, and then while I'm painting my knob bikers, I can assemble my battle wagon and have that good to go for um, painting with J's. And knob bikers should take me a week or two, a couple weeks probably. Uh, my current time frame, I should be done, I'd say, May. I'm going to be away for a week, of course, for Adepticon. Um, but, that's okay. As I said, these are cool vehicles, and I'm, I'm happy to have them done, you know? So next time, if I want to bring a bunch of trucks to a tournament, I can. And there's no way these would, are not tournament-worthy, so it's all good. You know, these are definitely tournament-worthy model paintings, so let me grab some more paint. I am currently running out of the blue. That's okay. And as I said, this video, I'm just going to touch up the blues. I'm going, a little, I'm going to do some light edge highlighting as well, just to bring out some details with a lighter blue. And then I'm going to maybe do a little bit of chipping, just a tiny bit, just to add a little bit of wear. I don't want to go too gross and messy. I, I used to do that to, to too much of an extreme, you know, too much rust, too much dirt. And I, it was fun, but I got tired of it. I just, I like maybe a little bit more of a pristine, not brand new look. My, my always thoughts my thoughts when i started painting death skulls was that you know they're the the looters 
So their models would never be pristine because they steal other people's stuff. But then I just got tired. Like I'd go see a really nicely painted model. And I'm like, I, you know what? I don't want to rust it all up. You know? So I'm not going to do it anymore. I'm just going to paint a little bit of weathering, some dirting, you know, but maybe on my, I'm painting some terrain that I might make a little rusty and dirty because it's a junkyard. Makes sense. But, uh, no, like right now for these models, I want to keep them all nice and not perfectly pristine or anything, but I'm not going to rust them all out. I want the blue to shine. I want the blues to look cool. big in the news. Mm, no. Sports. Oh, there's a miss. Or, and I just overpainted. There we go. Um, yeah, not too much. Sports. Baseball's about to start the preseason. Right, the spring training. Basketball, hockey, Leafs and Raptors are doing pretty well. I think they're currently in second in both of their divisions, the conference. So, both make the playoffs, pretty sure. Maybe not. There's a little bit more game to play. Cool. Look at that. I'm. I don't even know if I'm gonna have a full hour's worth of stuff to paint, but that's okay. I'm gonna start doing some edge highlighting and some light chipping. I still have to paint that other truck and tidy it up, but... Hmm. I do really like the way that these things turned out. And, yeah. I don't know what my girlfriend's watching up there. I think it's... it's Pickers, American Pickers, or whatever it's called. American Pickers, I think. People travel around and buy used stuff to sell it. Yeah. Clean up. Now we'll do the new truck. Which I'll definitely need one more layer of um, of red over the glass to really make it tinted. But um, let's just clean up the blues and I'll do some edge highlighting with the lighter blue in a few minutes. And call out a video. And then in the end, this this is the last time you'll see these trucks on my paint station. Next week it will be either well, it depends on how, how fast I can get them done, but I'm assuming it's gonna take me a little while to get the um, not bikers done. It should take me a little while. Um, today's Thursday. Yeah, I'm, I'll probably start them later in the week. It is family day on Monday, so I'm gonna spend some time with my girlfriend. Enjoy life. Um, which is nice too because I work the weekend and then I can have Monday off. And I'll get uh, some painting done in the meantime. That's good. I also got to do the lights of these guys, of course, but that's okay. <laughs> See? I think these guys are coming along really well. 
I definitely have to do a battle report in the near future with five trucks. Yeah, definitely have to do a battle report using these guys. Maybe the next one I run will be Speed Freaks. Maybe, we'll see. Maybe just Deaf Skulls. I love the New Yorks. I really do. I love the... Um, the new rules. I love it. I'm really happy. I've never... I haven't been happier with a new codex in a long time. Really. This has been by far my favorite new codex I've, I've seen in a little, several editions. Orcs really do have some competition now. Sorry, our orcs are competition now. And orcs have tons of flavor. I love the new cult rules, you know, the cult mechanics that you can, it gives them a bunch of different options to run a variety of lists. Um, I love them. I really do like this new codex. That I can say enough. I, I wasn't the biggest fan of Dark Angels. I wasn't the biggest fan of Grey Knights. I'm still not the biggest fan of Grey Knights. Grey Knights and Dark Angels just aren't very good. And I'm glad the discussions. The uh, We've been creating a discussion on Space Marines. Um, and uh, some people had good points. In Chaos Space Marines, you know, there's some certain Chaos lists now that are pretty disgusting. Like Thousand Sun Bolters with this Beta Bolter rule. I didn't think of that as well. And that's why I love the discussion as well. But um, to me, Space Marines in general aren't the most competitive. On average, I think it's all Xenos. Or Imperial Knights. Uh, sorry, Astronaut Terum slash Imperial Knights. What they call the Castellan list, right? Bring a Knight Castellan. Surround it with little guys that will just generate CP uh, before the game. And then use all the CP on the Knight to keep the Knight surviving, shooting as normal... All the pa use all the stratagems from the knight codex on the knight, despite the fact that no points were generated by that knight. And that's the way to win in the competitive meta. And I don't even play in the competitive meta, I know that. Great job, team. You know? It kind of reminds me of what's called the cheerleader strategy from... Um, there was a, what used to be called the cheerleader... I don't know if it still exists, but it used to be called the cheerleader strategy in um, Infinity... And when I started Infinity, I played Infinity for a little bit when I was working for Mini Wargaming. I played a couple games of Infinity. Wasn't the biggest fan. Apparently, it's really evolved since. And I'm going to give it a second shot someday. But um, what was in the, co in the competitive meta at the time was what was they called the cheerleader strategy or the cheerleader effect or something. And cheerleader. So all you would do is take a bunch of guys so that each guy gets an order, right, per turn, something that they can do. But then you take a really, really, really scary guy, and all you do is you spend all of the strategy, or all of the uh, commands, on the scary guy. So you only make your scary guy run around the battle, killing everything, and everyone else just stays back and are cheerleaders, in effect. They're there just to produce the extra commands that you will, in turn, use on the big scary guy. And apparently that strategy has been kind of nerfed since, which I'm really happy about, because, again, it defeats the purpose of the game, right? You're not supposed to just bring one scary guy. And that's, like, the whole... It's obviously why, you know, um, GW has really gone after Death Stars in this edition. There is no such thing, really, as a Death Star anymore, because uh, now, obviously, what you do is you keep everyone close together. That isn't actually a squad, but that's still not a Death Star, right? What... Death Stars used to be really scary. So now I, I mixed in some Lothar and Blue. And I'm just going to do a quick edge highlight to bring out some details for the Blues. Um, Death Stars were crazy. And that was the name of the game, right? You'd have a squad of knob bikers with a war boss attached and a pain boy. If you were an orc player, you'd, you know, Eldar had tons of different Death Stars. And uh, that's how people won games. Like, I, I once played a game against... Ben. Ben's a competitive player from from England. And he's uh, he, he's moving to Canada, of course. But um, he's moving to Canada soon, so I can't, that'll be cool to have him so, so much closer. 
But um, Ben played with Death Stars, and De- Ben had a Death Star where it was like a, we played a fifteen hundred point game or two thousand point game, two thousand point game, and eighteen hundred points I believe as his army was one squad. Like, okay, that's a bit ridiculous. And they were bikes, and they were fast, and they were survivable, and it was just like, uh, okay. It was it was crazy, it was crazy. Right, and that was the Death Star mentality. And I'm glad that 40k has really gone away from the Death Star mentality. But now it's it's it. We are in, in essence in a lot of the competitive meta. That cheerleader strategy is coming into play because so now the new the new I, I find in a lot of competitive lists it is simply you bring a lot of guys to generate CP. Right. And then you use the CP on the same person, right? Not the one who generated it necessarily, just bring something that has really cheesiness when you, this is the competitive circuit, I find. Again, the Castellans are really dominant in this. That you just, you bring one really scary model, spend all your CP on it for the entire game. Yeah. That's okay. To each his own. Of course, if your opponent can deal with that one Kassan, you're in trouble. Now, obviously, um, the person at LBO was undefeated with the Kassan list, so maybe it's easier said than done. I don't know. I don't play the cons- I don't play in the competitive circuit. I don't. I'm a, a fun player. I play in occasional tournaments, but not in the competitive meta. For that reason. Number one, I don't care about buying 19 of the same model. Or in this case, I guess it would be 3 or, or 9, depending on the squadron size. You know? That's not where the fun lies to me. It really isn't. Of course, I am paying 5 trucks, but that's because they're a vehicle. That you, you know, they're dedicated transport. And, uh, yeah, they're not broken. Trucks are definitely not broken. In the new codex, they are not anywhere close to being one of the broken units. I'm just picking off certain details, making them pop. And I'm going to do a couple, some light scratching if I want. Maybe not. I might just dirty it up. Yeah, finish there. That would be good. Mm-hmm. This week's video is not really about anything. It's mostly just me ranting. What do you guys think? That's my question. What do you guys think about the new, the current competitive meta of the game? I think it's I think it's okay from what I hear, but it doesn't seem to be a lot of variation. And how's your painting coming along for the year? You know, mine's going well so far. I'm on track to finish my orcs. I'm going to definitely finish my orcs this year, and then I'm going to turn my attention to Grey Knights or another army and just uh, keep painting. I'm going to paint my heart out this year and get. Uh, as much done as I can. I would love to eventually get to a point where I can actually like buy a model and paint it the same day or start painting it the same day with no guilt. Um, but of course I have that guilt because I have a large amount of unpainted models. But with each day, with each brush stroke, you know, ultimately, that problem's going away. It really is. I'm, uh, with these orcs being done, that's a huge thing off my plate. Huge. And as you can see, I started painting orcs back in October, I believe. No, November. Mm, or October, November. I was, I think it was November, because I was away in Europe for most of October. And I, um, been painting them since October, November. 
So it's been uh, a long journey, but I'm going to get it all done. There we go. Now, I'm just going to stop here because I'm going to take out the airbrush next and do some weathering and some lighting effects. But that's been great. I'm, I'm really happy, honestly, with the way that these are turning out. And I'm really happy with the progress. And overall, you know, life is good. I really is. So let's end now. So that concludes another painting with Jay. I really hope you enjoyed and got some painting done. I hope your world is being ridden of unpainted models. As always, this video is brought to you by my Patreon campaign. Link in the description below if you want to help support my videos. As you can see, their names go by my head. It's because of them that I keep making these videos as much as I can. Stay tuned for more painting with Jay. As always, my name is Jay. It's Alex with Jason. Painting with me.